How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're gonna take a look at 15.6 practice problems, applications of the equilibrium constant. So objectives, use the KQ value and expression to determine which direction a system will proceed in order to reach equilibrium given initial conditions. So basically KEQ versus Q and calculate the equilibrium concentrations given KEQ and initial conditions. Uh, note on this, you may need to use the quadratic equation. All right. Number one, how does Q compare to KEQ when a reaction is at equilibrium? So we know that the KEQ expression is always like the products to whatever their coefficients are uh, over the reactants concentration to whatever coefficients they are. Q is at any conditions. It's like, all right, cool. Whatever those concentrations are, just plug in those values. That's Q. Uh, for when it's at equilibrium, that's when we have KEQ. So the expression is the same. And so how does Q compare to KEQ when it's at equilibrium? Well, Q is going to equal the KEQ because it's at equilibrium. So they're going to end up being the same number when they're at equilibrium. Number two, if Q is greater than KEQ, so I know, hey, Q is greater than my KEQ, predict which way, forward or reverse, the equilibrium will proceed. So again, we're saying, hey, uh, the expression is gonna be the concentration of the products to whatever exponent divided by the concentration of the reactants to whatever exponents they are. Uh, Q is when you actually plug in your values. What are they at this moment? Uh, if Q is greater than KEQ, that tells you you have more products than reactants uh, then you're supposed to have at equilibrium. So if we got too many products, well, we're gonna have to shift to make more reactants. So we're gonna shift to the reverse, or sometimes it'll be said to the left because the reactants are put on the left side. So we're going to go from products towards reactants, the reverse direction. Number three, at 500 Kelvin, the equilibrium constant for the reaction, like here it is, is, well, Kp equals 6.5. A closed container at 500 Kelvin has added to it three atmospheres of Br2, 1.55 atmospheres of Cl2, and 1.7 atmospheres of BrCl. Based on these initial conditions, what will happen inside of the closed container? So we start with, well, what is my Kp expression? And it's going to be the pressure of BrCl squared right, the squared because of the two coefficient, divided by the pressure of Br2 to the first power, because there's a coefficient of one, times the pressure of Cl2, again, to the power of one. So now, to get our Q, we just plug in our initial values. It says, hey, three atmospheres of Br2, 1.5 atmospheres of Cl2, and 1.7 atmospheres of BrCl. So I gotta put, hey, BrCl, 1.7, which is gonna get squared, divided by the pressure of Br2, 3.00 atmospheres, times the 1.5 atmospheres from Cl2. And now when I plug and chug, and I actually get the number, I end up with 0.642, and that's my Q. They're saying my KEQ at equilibrium, what I should get is 6.5. So right now, it's saying my Q is significantly smaller than my KEQ. And I know it's products over reactants. How am I gonna get a bigger number? I'm gonna have to shift to the right to make more products. Right, and that is because my Q is smaller than my KEQ. So I need to make more products. There you go. Number four, the equilibrium constant Kp for the equilibrium between this uh, PCL5 and PCL3 is this number. There's the equilibrium. A sealed container initially has 0.132 atmospheres of PLC, PCL5 added to it. What is the equilibrium partial pressure? All right, so we're gonna wanna set up what we call an ice box. So we start with PCL5 and we make PCL3 and Cl2. So my ice box, initial change equilibrium. My initial concentrations or pressures would be for PCL5, 0.132 atmospheres. I have zero PCL3 and zero Cl2. My change, well, it's gonna change some amount X. I use up some amount of PCL5, so that's a minus sign. 
which means PCL3 is being created, so plus X, and Cl2 is also gonna be plus X. It's a one to one ratio for all those things. So at equilibrium, PCL5 is 0.132 atmospheres minus whatever it went down, X. PCL3 is just X and so is Cl2. So now I gotta set up my expression. All right, Kp is gonna be the pressure of the products, so pressure of PCL3 times the pressure of Cl2, both of them to the first power because the coefficients there are one, divided by the pressure of my reactants, so the pressure of uh, PCl5. So now I'm gonna plug in my equilibrium values for those. PCl3 and Cl2 are both x, so it's gonna be x times x divided by 0.132 minus x is gonna equal Kp. So now this one's not too bad. Um, I gotta do a little rearranging. So I can do some algebra, I end up with x squared, and I'm gonna multiply the denominator to the other side and distribute. So x squared is gonna equal 0.132 times Kp minus Kp times x. So now if I wanna set it up into the quadratic equation, I gotta get everything on one side and zero on the other side. So I'm gonna have uh, x squared plus Kpx plus 0.132 times Kp, all that is gonna equal zero. All right, I'm gonna erase this so I got a little more room. So now I use my quadratic equation. I know my A is gonna equal one, my B is gonna be my Kp value, and my C is gonna equal, oh wait, I, I goofed a little bit, this, should be a minus kpx, I'm sorry. Or no, that's plus kpx, that's a minus 0.132 times kp. So c is negative 0.132 times my kp value, um, which when I actually do that math, I end up with a negative 0.005572 as my value for c. So, you know, negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. I'm going to end up with X is going to equal uh, 0 0.0565 or, because quadratic is going to give me two options, negative 0 0.0986. And now only one of these is going to make sense. You know, which one is it? Well, if X was negative 0 0.0986 at equilibrium, my pressure would be a negative thing, so that can't be it. So my positive answer uh, for Cl2 is gonna be 0 0.0565 atmospheres. All right, so kind of, a, kind of a tough one, not gonna lie. All right, number five, at a given temperature, the Kp for the equilibrium below is 2.65 times 10 to the third. There's the equilibrium. A sealed container is charged with 24.1 atmospheres of NO at equilibrium. The partial pressure of N2 is what? So same process. I start with 2 NO. Here's my equilibrium. And I'm going to make N2 and O2. So I create my ice box. Um, ICE, initial change equilibrium. Initially, I start with 24.1 atmospheres of NO and no N2 and no O2. I'm going to use up... Ooh, this two right here, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use up two X, so that way I know I'm making one X and two, as well as one X of O2, right? It's a two to one ratio between those things. But equilibrium, my NO is gonna be 24.1 minus two X, N2 is gonna be X, and O2 is going to be X. So now I set up my KP expression, products over reactants, it's gonna be the pressure of N2 times the pressure of O2, both to the one power because of the coefficient of one, uh, divided by uh, the pressure of NO, which gets squared because of the two coefficient. Now, when I plug in my equilibrium uh, values, I have X times X divided by uh, 24.1 minus X, which gets squared. So I end up with x squared on top divided by 24.1 minus x squared on the bottom. What's nice about this 
is because the numerator and the denominator of both are both squared, I can take the square root of both sides. So if this whole thing equals kp, I'm going to clear up some room over here. I can take the square root of both sides. And what I end up with is x over 24.1 minus x has to equal the square root of kp. So now I can just do a little algebra. I multiply this to both sides. I get x um, on its own. And you know what? At this point, this is just algebra. So when you solve for x, you get x equals 11 point nine as my equilibrium pressure right n2 is x and that's what they're asking me to solve for so x equals 11.9 atmospheres there you go right number six given a kp of 0 0.0207 at 800 kelvin for this reaction there it is during experiment h2 and i2 have an equilibrium partial pressure of this respectively what is the partial pressure of hi all right, so again, I'm working with an equilibrium constant expression. So let me start with that. My Kp is going to be the pressure of my products. So the pressure times of H2 times the pressure of I2, both to the first power because of their coefficients, divided by the pressure of Hi, which is going to get squared because of this coefficient. Now what's nice is they're telling us H2 and I2 constant or pressures. So I know those two things. They told me my KP, really the only thing I don't know is the pressure of HI, and that's what they're asking me to solve for. So let me do a little rearranging. I'm gonna do a little algebra. I'm gonna get the pressure of HI squared is gonna equal the pressure of H2 times the pressure of I2 divided by KP, right? Essentially, I switched those two things. This is what I'm trying to solve for, so I got it by itself on the other side. All right, well, if it's squared, let me take the square root of both sides, and I get the pressure of HI is going to equal the square root of the pressure of H2 times the pressure of I2 divided by Kp. So now I just plug and chuck. Pressure of H2 was uh, 0.785 times 0.658 divided by, what's it, 0.020, oh, 0. 207 and then that whole thing gets square rooted and when i do that and i plug and chug i get beep bop beep bop boop 5.00 atmospheres all right so i hope you found that helpful see you in class goodbye